Oh my, 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 my. Or as somebody we know says, Oh my! Not even like a cool Dick Enberg kind of way. A lame, uh, face you want to punch Michael Cole type of way. We are at the end of a decade. The end of a decade. So, it got me to thinking. Let's have one last Q&A video this year, and let's make it about the decade that was of professional wrestling that started off in 2010, if you remember, January 4th, 2010 specifically. It's Impact Wrestling, TNA Impact Wrestling, going head up against Monday Night Raw. Those were the times, weren't they? Oof. Versus now, <laughs> we went from we went from Hogan and Bischoff showing up on TNA and Bret Hart stepping back into WWE ring as guest host of Monday Night Raw to things like the Lana Rusev, Bobby Lashley love triangle. My God, what a decade of professional wrestling and on in a good way. And of course, you guys responded with plenty of questions. And as a result, this is probably going to end up being a two-part Q&A video. So let's have some fun. Let's take a look back at the decade that was in professional wrestling. Michael Gavin, LE1, starts us off by asking, I saw your video about how nothing will change in 2020 because it won't, it'll only get worse. Now going into its 19th year of declining ratings for WWE, there's no place to return. Do you think AEW is going to change how mix of a bag it's been? Uh, do you think Impact will get casual viewers? <laughs> <laughs> I always love starting off a Q&A with the funny, and Michael Gavin has provided the funny. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Hail no. And hail no. How about that? Byron Andreas, what do you think about the Lars Sullivan porn? And any chances of a review? Second question, no. Just no. Although I saw some tweets referencing uh, that he didn't exactly rise to the occasion. <laughs> as far as the porn itself, hey, in its own bubble, who cares? That's what he did. He was a grown-ass man. He could do whatever the hell he wants. If he needed the money, so be it more power to him. The problem is, is the hypocrisy of this guy who has said racist and bigoted anti-gay things. Of course, it comes out that he was doing gay porn, and apparently not just one video, but a few of them. So as a result, his roosters came home to roost if he get my drift. He deserves all the joking he gets about him. He deserves all the mocking he's getting, not because he did a gay porn, but because of the other stuff that went with it. So um, I'd be surprised if he hangs around WWE. I'm sorry, I keep feeling like I've got freaking dog hair on my nose. This damn beagle is shedding like crazy. Anyways, uh, no review, and he he got his comeuppance, I guess, huh? MDW asks, if Aces and Aids wasn't botched so badly, would TNA still be a thing? Uh, probably not. The, the decline would have perhaps slowed a little bit. But once they lost the Spike TV deal, it went downhill very, very quickly. LALT87, who will God face at WrestleMania? I think that is a fantastic question. And that is something I assume we will find out in the weeks and months to come. It should be a big match worthy of God himself. That's what I know. Callum Burgess 14, what's your most shocking moment of this decade of professional wrestling. Most shocking moment. <sighs> Most shocking moment. Oh. The fact that they actually had Lesnar end the Undertaker streak at WrestleMania 30. And not just because they ended it, but because of who they had ended. And more specifically, the fact that the build-up to that match was really bad. Like, if you're going to do that, and you're going to go there, then by God, don't you think 
that the program leading up to the big match should be better than that? Yeah, that was my most shocking moment of the decade. It was bad. Always be bad. Um, ENC, ECN, excuse me, 98. What does the next decade hold for professional wrestling? A continual decline? I don't know what else you want me to say. A continual decline. The hell makes me think it's going to get any better. I have no reason to believe that. No reason to think that. Nor should anybody else. Unless you're being delusional. Or caught up in their own hardcore markdom. Casey Pena. Biggest failures of WWE trying to make mainstream stars. Well, I think here is the one fundamental flaw with the premise of your question. Is were they actually really trying to make mainstream stars? And superstars at that, because we know this company is totally and completely adverse to making those big-time mainstream superstars. They don't want to do that. They want to utilize props. The scene is the Ortons of the world, and now the Roman Reigns is on Seth Rollins of the world. Those guys are the props that they can still promote the, the shield of WWE, the brand of WWE first and foremost, and these guys are just kind of the placeholders. Um... So I think when you're talking about biggest failures, there are several guys that they potentially could have, but they objectively chose not to, and therein lies the failure. Stephen Hilton, highest and lowest moment for you in this decade of wrestling. <sighs> highest moment for me has to be Mark Henry beating Randy Orton at Night of Champions 2011. You damn right! Lowest moment of the decade. Uh, when the old channel got hacked. I think that was that was probably the lowest moment. Uh, Cliff here. Worst booking decision of the decade for any wrestling promotion. Oh, God. Worst of the entire decade between 2010 and 2019. God. There's so many bad ones. How do you choose just one? There's are some really, really, really bad, stupid ones like Jack Swagger winning Money in the Bank at WrestleMania 26 completely out of freaking nowhere. And then the a-hole takes almost two minutes to unhook the Money in the Bank briefcase. But then you think about it long term, how much impact did that really have? The answer is not much. So that's not the worst one. It was just a bad, dumb one. A worst booking decision of the decade for any wrestling promotion. A lot of people are going to have a lot on this one. I will go with Aces and Eights and going as balls deep, to borrow from Klondike Bill, as TNA did with that storyline and how long that storyline ran and how ratings and viewership continued to decline as that storyline persisted and insisted on continuing and yet they kept going with it like, the decisions that were involved with that storyline were, to me, the worst of the decade. Because it killed off the last best chance we had for anything close to a viable competitor of, to WWE. When you think AEW... <laughs> AEW wishes it could get into Impact Wrestling viewership numbers from several years back. Give me a break. Um, Master Havoc. Worst WWE wrestler of the last decade. Oh, God. Why would you ask me that question? Worst WWE wrestler of the last decade. Got so many choices and so many options. But when I think of pieces of pieces of crap, there is one that really, truly sinks below the rest. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ziggler! Here's your answer. Case 10. What was worse? Cena beating Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. <laughs> Sting losing to Khan at WrestleMania. <laughs> it's the Monday Night War. It's all over again. We're not putting you over, WCW. Or Cena beating the Nexus at SummerSlam 2010. Like, Cena beating Bray was bad. And it took Bray Wyatt several years to recover. And he had to become a whole new character and everything else. But he's a world champion now, so that's not it. Sting losing to God at Mania was insulting and dumb and just 
once again, evidence of the miracle, the majesty that is the magnificence of the ego of Hunter Hearst Helmsley. But it was still a guy in his 40s wrestling a guy in his 50s about some crap that happened 15, 20 years ago. So, that ain't it. John Cena burying the Nexus at SummerSlam 2010 because he just had to do it his way in that crappy year of wrestling that was 2010, instantly killing that storyline and everything else and permanently damaging the people that were involved in it. John Cena beating the Nexus was the worst out of those three that you listed by far, and it's not even close. Jimmy, after being on YouTube for almost 10 years, uh, does reviewing still keep and raise your interest? Is it just a habit now or a little bit of both? I would definitely say without the channel, I would probably watch Zero Wrestling. Or very, very little at this point. So it is the channel that keeps me involved. So as much as anything else, it's the channel that creates the habit. Um, I wouldn't say it keeps or raises my interest. Now, if I still had the old crew with me and we could do the things we used to do and have fun at the expense of these different companies and just have fun talking about this stuff, it would probably be a much different story, honestly. Um, then Chrysler Official uh, asked one of the most ridiculous questions of the decade. He should be ashamed of himself, and he should be tasked with having to say 666 a letters! 666 of them! That's why I got the number right. I never think that is the Hunter of a Hearst and the Helmsley. 666 of them. Name a miracle your false god can't do. False god. False god. While people foolishly believe in this invisible higher power that allows children to die of cancer and other diseases and allows people to be homeless and suffering and all these other things. It is Hunter Hearst Helmsley that manages to strategically position himself in a way that he gets a feature marquee main event type WrestleMania match every year, several years past the relevancy of when he should get it. False God. False God. You can see him. You can believe in him because you know it to be true. You see these matches get pulled out of thin air. That's miracle making. That's a real God. That's somebody to pray to because that's something you can believe in, just like a Joe Pesci. If you get that reference, more power to you. False God. False God! <sighs> All right, you want, you want it? You want to play this game? You want to get nuts? Let's get schleg nuts. Name a miracle your false god can't do. That is, take a bunch of indie fucking bingo hall, flipping, kicking, no selling, flopping, high spotting, fucking false finishing screwballs like he's got in NXT or any other promotion throughout professional wrestling today and actually make them into main event stars because nobody, and I emphasize again, nobody can do that. Because on a grander scale, why the hell would casual and mainstream people want to watch these idiots? That's a miracle that even God himself can't do. Last question for part one of this q and can't believe you, Chrysler. 666 Hail Hunter! B.W. Roses, when was the last time the OG OTR Central crew did a review? I think it was back in June or July of 2013 before I moved out here to Virginia. So it has been six plus years. Can you believe that? Like there are probably plenty of people that watch this channel now that have absolutely no idea what the hell we're even talking about. Which is sad. And that's on me. One of those touchy type of things where you make the move. The reasons you made the move didn't ultimately work out, but you've made it all right out here but you miss your friends and you miss watching wrestling with them, miss doing the show with them. Say so damned if you do and you damned if you don't. Anyways, <laughs> I'm going to sneeze now. My bad. I was trying to find it off and it just didn't work. Thank you to everyone who submitted your questions for part one of this Q&A. Hopefully I won't sneeze anymore. I'll be back soon with part number two. So stay tuned.